Heidi Ho, it's Andrew from the Glazer Tutoring Company. Today I would like to teach you how to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes, I totally missed that, of the following rational function of blah, 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 blah. All right, so what we need to do first is, well, we don't really need to do this first, but we'll talk about the domain first. Now remember, when you're thinking about domain, you're going to be thinking about what values of x can I not plug into this function or that will give a wacky result. I look at the numerator, denominator, and then the whole fraction together. I look at it three steps, all right? So is there any value of x that, uh, I, you know, that I can't plug in here for the numerator? Well, no, right? I can plug in a positive, negative, could be zero. It doesn't matter, right? If you had a square root here, well, that's a different story. You cannot plug in a negative value, so then I would be excluding all negative numbers, all right? But that's the idea. Then in the bottom, we're going to do the same thing. You can cube any number, right? Positive, negative, zero, it doesn't matter. So again, in the denominator, there's no restriction. But when you think about overall, there is a certain number you're not allowed to plug into the denominator of a function, right? What is that? Well, it's zero, right? Because if you take zero and divide it into four, what is that? Well, I don't know. You can't put nothing into something. It doesn't make sense, all right? It's undefined. So basically now what that's telling me is that the denominator now uh, cannot be equal to zero. So what I need to do to find now the x values that give an overall result of zero here, I have to set up a little math equation for myself, right? I do x cubed minus 27 and I set it equal to zero. And if I solve this now for x cubed, right, plus the 27, if I solve this, well not for x cubed, well I am at the moment, but I'm gonna solve for x. I gotta take the cube root of both sides, okay, cube root of 27. So x is gonna be equal to three, all right? So when x is three, it gives an overall result of zero down here, and that is a problem. It can't happen. So what this means that is that the domain of the function is gonna be all real numbers, all real numbers except for uh, x being equal to negative three. Okay, that's all that that is. Now next, we're gonna look at the vertical asymptotes, and it turns out that by doing the domain, we kind of already did the vertical asymptotes a little bit, okay? Um, so in this particular case, what we're going to consider is we're considering now, whenever you're finding the vertical asymptotes, is you're gonna think about, well, what values can I not plug into the denominator here that will give an overall result of zero, okay? We already did this, which is kind of nice. Now it turns out that there's only one special value Okay, now the difference here is that this represents also an equation of a line, right? X being equal to negative three, that is a vertical line, right? So this is also known as the vertical asymptote. So by doing the domain, we kind of did the vertical asymptote at the same time, right? You kind of kill two birds with one stone, but since we don't kill, we're gonna have two desserts in one sitting, okay? So, or you get to have your cake and eat it too. Never really understood that saying, but get to have your cake and eat it too. If you have a cake, aren't you eating it? I don't know. Maybe not. That would be like torture. Imagine having a cake just right in front of you, but you can't eat it. Right? Man, I'm hungry. All right, all right, all right. Um, so that's the vertical asymptote. Now what we're going to do is we're going to then focus on the horizontal asymptote. Okay? Now when you do the horizontal asymptote, you have to think about kind of three things. Is the function top heavy, equally heavy, or bottom heavy? Okay, and it's very simple. All you're gonna do is you're gonna locate the x's and their powers. I'm looking for the highest power of x in the numerator, that's to the first. I look for the highest power of x in the denominator, that's to the third, and I realize three is greater than one, so this is a bottom heavy function. If this were cubed, that'd be an example of an equally uh, heavy function, and if this were to the fourth or higher, then that's a top heavy function, relatively easy. Now you can memorize this, anytime you have a bottom heavy function, the horizontal asymptote will always be equal to zero. Y equals zero, that's the equation. The way to think it through though is you wanna think about the limit. As X approaches infinity, what happens to this function, right? Well, as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right, we're trying to determine the end behavior kind of kind of thing. And as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, both of these go to infinity, okay? But, but, this goes to infinity to a power of three times faster, okay, than this one does. So this one will go to infinity much faster than this does, and therefore the denominator becomes, or the denominator grows faster than the numerator. And since the denominator is growing faster than the numerator, the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger relative to the numerator, and you're having something that looks like this, one over 1,000 
or 1 million or what, whatever. And eventually that's going to go to zero. Okay. So what that means is just simply that the limit here is as X approaches uh, infinity is going to be zero or Y equaling zero. So that is the horizontal asymptote. Now what we can do is, I mean, that's the end of the problem, but we can always graph this thing, right? So we graph it and we see what the calculator says. So three plus X, right? Just to kind of get a visual, then divided by now, open parentheses, you're going to do X cubed, X cubed minus 27. Now let's see kind of what happens here. And there's the graph, right? So let's see what it says. Let's blow this up. There it goes, got blown up. And we have a vertical asymptote right here. No, that's horizontal. Wow. Okay, I think I'm going to pause after this one. Uh, we have a horizontal asymptote here at y equaling zero. Okay, that's a horizontal asymptote. That's what we said it should be. Remember, bottom heavy always going to have uh, horizontal asymptote at zero. And then we have this vertical asymptote, and this vertical asymptote is x equals 3. Look, 1, 2, 3. That's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope this helps. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for all the support. We really do appreciate it. We want to help you with more, and, uh, you know, check us out, because we have literally thousands of videos out there, not only in math, but chemistry and physics as well, and we solve specific problems. And, you know, that's what you're going to see on your test. So you really have to become good at problem solving, answering questions. You know, you look over the theory a little bit, that's fine. But you got to apply. This is applied stuff. All right. You have to figure out how to apply it to problems. So practice with problems. All right. And we have great resources for that. Check us out. We'll see you soon.